and welcome to this episode of Command the Media. What we're going to do today is we're going to start a fun little project. I call it the tractor animation, but really what it is is it's taking a still image, a graphic that is anything that you would need to animate, really. Uh, it, this happens all the time, whether it be in documentary production, whether it be in video production, whether it be in television production. A lot of times in documentaries, you're going to have these old images. This will happen tons in old images. But I could see this happening a lot in lots of different types of productions. What we're going to do to get us an image we can work with, we're going to go to the Washington County Historical Society webpage. It's going to be wchsutah.org. And on that page, we're going to have along the left hand column we've got this photos link we'll click on that and then we'll click on WCHS historical photo collection this is going to show us a bunch of images we're going to go ahead and scroll down until we get to 1243 and this 1243 is a pond that was under construction in a little town in southern Utah called Pinto and let's go ahead and just click on that. So what we have here, I'm going to go ahead and click on this higher resolution version, and I invite you to do this as well. Click on for a higher resolution version of this photo, click here, click on that, click here. It's going to open it up in a new browser tab. And what we've got is we've got this old tractor with uh, this old guy in here. He's probably not alive anymore. I feel bad for that, but that's the way life goes. The circle of life. Anyway, so we've got pond construction, East Pinto cattle. This looks to me to be maybe in the 1920s, 1930s, something like that. We're going to take this image and what we're going to do is we're going to animate this tractor and also add a little bit of exhaust smoke coming out of the exhaust pipe just to give this a little bit more pep and zing. This might be something where if we were making a documentary, whether it be film or television production, we could see how animating this and maybe having it go down into the pit a little bit might add a little bit more realism to this and also make something that would just be an old photograph with just something that might be interesting for about five seconds, we could really get a little bit more time out of this on screen, whether it be 20 seconds or so, something like that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and right click on this and I'm going to save this to my downloads folder. And I like to use my downloads folder, but I invite you to move it somewhere else because your downloads folder is one of those folders that you will be deleting. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and go down to my downloads folder, expand it out, and just drop this onto my Photoshop icon. Now, depending on your computer, that may not work exactly as intended. You can certainly go into Photoshop, go to File, Open, and Browse to your downloads folder. Again, I do not invite you to leave that in your downloads folder. You should have a project file that will work perfectly. And we've worked with Photoshop on this channel before. We've got our background layer right here. We're not going to manipulate that background layer. We're just going to immediately grab a copy of that background layer. And I'm going to go ahead and rename this because when we bring this into After Effects, we want to make sure that we know what the layer names are. I'm going to call this one BG. And that way I know that it's not the one called background. I'll just remember that it's BG. What I'm going to do with this image is I'm straight out of the gate just going to remove this label down here. So go ahead and zoom in using my zoom tool. I pressed Z on the keyboard. That's my zoom tool. And actually I'll hit command minus sign or control minus sign if you're on a PC. And what we're going to do is we're just going to totally just remove this with the patch tool. So I'll go ahead and I've got up my healing brush here. I'll just click on that, hold my mouse down. I'll be able to select the patch tool. And with the patch tool, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to draw a selection around this label. Just draw it. I'm going to hug the bottom of the label and then come right back up over the top. Once I get over the top here, I'll just finish and let it just go ahead and finish that shape. I've got the label in here now. Now all I'm going to do is I'm going to click and I'm going to drag that out. And you can see what's happening is, is that the patch is being replaced with this new area. This is kind of like the clone stamp tool on steroids. I'll go ahead and let go. And I'll hit Command-D to deselect, and you can see I end up with a perfect patch of this information that's up above here. Now, I am not a big fan of patterns. Again, we can always tell in Photoshop when we've got patterns that something's been happening. So I'll hit S on my keyboard. I'm going to use the right square bracket to expand my brush just a little bit. I've got an 80-pixel brush as we look up here in the upper left-hand corner. I'm going to hold down my option or alternate key, and I'm just going to kind of get rid of some of these patterns. I'm just sampling one area and getting rid of these things that are obviously the exact same stuff so that we can make this label look like it is not there. We get rid of some of this garbagey area. I don't know if this looks like tree branches, something like that. And it's just a matter of kind of filling it in 
until it looks different enough that we can get away with it being realistic. One last thing, I've got this thing right here, right here. I'm going to go ahead and just click one more time and sample that out. And as I look at that, there's no way to tell that that is something that we've manipulated. So what we've got in mind with this image is when we bring this into After Effects, we are going to have three different layers. We're going to have the background layer, and the background layer is going to be the this exact same landscape, but without the tractor in it, because we anticipate moving this tractor. In order to move the tractor and have there not be a second tractor here, we got to erase this tractor. So we're going to have a background layer, BG. We're going to erase the tractor. Then we're going to have a layer that's just on top of that background layer that's going to be only just the tractor. And then we're going to have a third layer that's going to be just the foreground. And that's going to be the area of dirt that would be in front of this tractor. That'll allow us in After Effects to animate the tractor, have it go down into the pit, and have everything work perfectly. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and just make a copy of this background layer and make a second copy of that background layer. And then I'm just going to hide those two top layers and work just with this BG layer. The BG layer needs to be exactly what I see here, but without this tractor in it. I'm gonna go ahead and hit my zoom tool, Z on the keyboard, zoom in just a little bit. And I'm just going to center that up with my scroll bar you might have to use the hand tool, hold your space bar down and move it around with the hand tool. And I'm going to erase this tractor using the clone stamp tool. So I'll just go ahead and hit S on the keyboard. And anytime we do erasing using the clone stamp tool or in any, any types of tools in Photoshop, what we're really looking for is we're looking for what would be behind this tractor if the tractor were not here. So we've got kind of this dirt here that's got tractor treads in it. We know that that would be this area of the tractor along the top area. We've got this part of the pit right in here, and this part of the pit would be in front of the blade, the middle part of the tractor. And then we might have a little bit more of these kind of tractor treads here, down here where the wheels of the tractor are, if, we, if I can call them wheels. So I'm gonna go ahead and take, I've got this area of just plain old dirt without tractor treads, which should be here on the roof. I'm just gonna go ahead and sample right here on this line. I'll hold down my alternate, alternate or option key, and I'm just going to click to sample that area right where that line between the types of dirt changes. I'll click and start to drag. And anytime we use the clone stamp tool, we know that uh, one sample point and as much as we can get away with using that sample point and copying and pasting those pixels in, that's going to be good for us. So I'm gonna go ahead and use this. We can see as I get right to this point, I'm getting to the edge of the image now. I'm not gonna worry too much about it. I'm still going to go ahead and just clone this out. Now I end up with starting to paste the tractor back into place. Still not letting go though. Again, we want to use this as much as possible, but I get to this point now where I'm really starting to get that tractor back into place. So I'm going to go ahead and lift up there. And since I do not have my, uh, since I do have my aligned button pressed, if I start pasting here, I'm going to end up with that exactly where I had it. That uh, cursor will start sampling exactly where I had it. So that's exactly what I want. I should also mention uh, you need you do want to have this aligned button pressed for this activity as well as when you sample you definitely want to sample current and below. Sometimes it says uh, current layer, sometimes it says all layers. Uh, for this one let's go ahead and do current and below. I find that the clone stamp tool uh, most of the time I'm going to end up with current and below. There are times where we'll change that. All right, so I've got most of the tractor taken out. I'm going to go ahead and copy and paste some of this area of the pit over here so I can get rid of some of the blade. Hold down my alternate key, select that area, and then I'm just going to go ahead and copy that, get rid of all of that blade area. Notice that I'm not worried about some of the stuff that doesn't look good just yet. Right now I'm just worried about making it look proper. So right here in the pit, this looks great. But obviously I've got an exact copy of this area to this area, and I've still got some of these tractor treads in here that I've got to take care of. I'm not concerned. I'm not going to go nuts with this. I'm not going to go crazy. I am going to sample over here now and grab this and get rid of this little bit of the tread right in here, as well as that vertical line that appeared because I was at the edge of the image. Still have some shadow here, but I think I can leave that. No one knows what that's for. I'm going to go ahead and sample up here, do the exact same thing down here. And now I've got the bulk of this tractor gone. So now I'm going to look for patterns. Anytime we're working in Photoshop and we've been doing clone stamping, patterns are going to be what our human 
audience is going to be looking for. Our, we humans, we like patterns, and we want to get rid of these patterns. So I'm going to go ahead and just sample right here in the middle. I'm just going to break up some of these things that look exactly the same. So I've got the exact same look here and here. So I'm going to go ahead and just sample over here and just break it up just a little bit. And even right in there, I mean, honestly, that, that looks about right to me. Uh, maybe I can add just a little bit right in here where that blank area is. Uh, but as far as I'm concerned, that looks really, really, really good. I'm going to go with that. I'm going to hit Command-0 and just look what the entire background looks like. And I like it. It looks great. I'm going to go ahead and save that. We like to save often. I hit Command-S. I'm going to go ahead and call this tractor.psd. And I'm going to leave it in my downloads folder just because that's how I roll for this activity. But I would invite you to save that into a folder that's for this specific project. I anticipate deleting this as soon as the video is done. I'll click save and everything's good. You might have a thing that comes up that says maximize cap compatibility. That's fine. Select OK. All right. That takes care of our background layer. I'm going to go ahead and turn on my next layer up, and I'm going to turn off that background layer. I'm going to turn off the visibility for that. And what we're going to do is we're going to cut the tractor out of this particular layer. We're going to have nothing on this layer except the tractor now. Now, if I add a layer mask, which is exactly how we're going to do this, if I add that layer mask right now and I start to make some of the pixels on this layer transparent, we're going to see the background layer underneath and we're not going to be able to tell that we've done anything. So I could turn off this background layer and then we would just see the gray and white checkerboard, but I want to make it very, very clear what I'm doing. So I'm going to go ahead and click the new layer button. I'm going to drag that layer just below my BG copy, which I'm actually going to rename right now to Tractor because that's what it's going to be. I'm going to select that layer one, which I'm going to throw away. And I'm going to now just select as my foreground color, just any old color. I've got this blue color, almost cyan. I'm going to click on that. That's going to be just fine. I'm going to select my paint bucket tool, which I've got right here, but you may have the gradient tool up. You could select G or shift G until you get the paint bucket. Got my layer one selected. I'll just go ahead and click inside there. And I don't see anything different. That's because I can't see layer one because the tractor layer is on top. I'll go ahead and close the visibility on that. And I can see that I've got that cyan color, almost blue, aquamarine, I don't know, cool color names. And I'm going to turn on that tractor layer. Now I'll be able to see what I'm making transparent. So I'll go ahead and select that tractor layer now. And I will add a layer mask to it. So I'll add that layer mask. I have the layer mask selected anytime we are making pixels transparent. We want to make sure and have the layer mask selected, not the pixels of the layer selected, which would be in this case. I want to make sure I've got the layer mask selected. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to paint black on this layer, on the layer mask, so that all of the area that is on the layer mask that's black will become transparent. So I'll switch the foreground and background color. Right now I've got white as my foreground, black as my background. In fact, what I'm going to do is I'll just hit X on the keyboard. That's going to swap those places. I want to use my brush tool, so I'll hit B on the keyboard. That's my shortcut for brush. And I want to make sure as I'm working with the brush, what I normally do, I'll come up here, just make sure I've got hardness turned down to 0%. Having a nice soft edge on the brush comes in, in very, very handy when working with these elements. All right, so in fact, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to go ahead and just paint, because most of this layer is going to be transparent, I'm actually going to fill the layer mask with black. So what I'll do, I'll go ahead and hit G on the keyboard. That brings back up my paint bucket. And I'm going to click inside that layer so that I can make the layer mask completely transparent. Then I'm going to go back to my brush. And this time, rather than painting black, I'm going to go ahead and paint white exactly where that tractor was. I'm using my right square bracket to adjust the, to increase the size of my brush, or I could use the left square bracket to decrease the size of the brush. And that tractor's about right in here, so I'll go ahead and just rough this back in. This will save you a lot of time. If you are just using uh, the layer mask to get rid of most of the information, or to make most of the pixels on the layer transparent, a lot of times it's easier to start with the, com the layer completely transparent, and then just bring back and rough in the area that you need to be opaque. So I've got this now painting white on here to bring this tractor back into opacity. I've got the entire area done. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and zoom in. I've got Z on the keyboard. And I zoom in now on this. And I'll just use my space bar, which will bring up the hand tool. And what I want to do is I want to bring this edge right up in here. Now, you might be wondering, why is this this blue color? Well, of course, it's blue, even though we painted black on here. 
the mask is black, and because the mask is black, it allows us to see through this part of the layer anywhere the mask is black. It makes those pixels transparent. So we're actually seeing the blue as the layer underneath. I'll prove it by turning this on and off. If I turn that off, we see the background underneath. If I turn that off, then we see the white and gray checkerboard. So I'll turn that layer back on. So even though we're painting black and white, all we're doing is painting opacity and transparency onto this layer mask and either hiding or making visible the layer underneath. I'll go back to my brush, B on the keyboard. I'm going to reduce the brush size. And this time I'm going to paint black on here. So I'll hit X on the keyboard, swap the foreground and background color. And I'm just going to bring this relatively close. Now I've got a pretty soft brush on here. And what we'll find is the smaller the brush size, the smaller the area of the brush that is soft. And so because I had a large brush size to rough in the whole tractor, we end up with these this large soft area. And all I'm doing is just kind of bringing that area in a little bit closer to the tractor. I'm not too worried about the blade just yet and that dirt that's in front of the blade. I'm going to go, go ahead and just bring that area in just a little bit closer. You can see anywhere where I see where that background behind the tractor should not be because I want it to be transparent. I'll go ahead and just now rough that in. Now that I've got that even closer, I'll go ahead and make the brush size even smaller using my left square bracket. I'll zoom in just a little bit more. I'm going to hit command plus sign a couple times, even one more time, zoom in even a little bit more. And I'm going to go ahead and just now get this even closer. Now, this is about close enough. We can see the brush is still just a little bit soft and it's adding just a little bit of a soft edge to the line between the tractor foreground and the background. I'm not going to worry about this little piece right here. I always like to have a little talk when I'm doing this now. Anytime we're working in television production especially, anytime we're animating something like this and we are working with things that take time like this and this time now I'm actually going to break in one more time and I'm going to say that I'm not going to worry about the foreground here where this dirt is in front of the trade treads because this is all going to be hidden by the foreground layer. So I'm going to go ahead and just move myself right up here by the blade. I'm going to go ahead and just kind of bring it on up in here where the blade has that dirt in front of it. Can it come right up in here now and hug that blade again right through here. I've got this little bit of area right in here. And again, back to my conversation. So what we want to balance, we want to balance time and money, right? So we definitely don't want to take a lot of time on this. This is going to be something that's going to be on screen for just a short time. It may be on screen for about 20 seconds. So we don't want to spend hours and hours working on this and making it perfect. Now, having said that, it's got to be believable. If it's not believable, then people say, what kind of a person is this? Is this a, an artist that cares about his or her work? And we definitely don't want to have that happen because we want people to know that we care about our work. So as we do this, I'm taking the time that's necessary, but you'll notice, and I'm doing this in real time, that I'm not going crazy with this and thinking, oh my gosh, this has got to be absolutely perfect. I want to get it close and not so close that I'm spending hours on it. So there we go. So I've got it all the way around the perimeter now. I'm going to go ahead and just go along the roof right here. And then I'm just going to fill in these areas here to ensure that it's completely transparent right through here. Now, as we've gotten pretty close, one of the things we need to fix now, I've got this area of dirt right in here. I'm just going to go ahead and make the brush just a little bit smaller so that it'll fit inside that little gap. And I'll just do that right through the air cleaner right in there. Right up to the hood. And I'll get this last little bit here. I'm not going to worry that it's not perfect right through here. Again, that's my whole conversation. Everything over here looks good. That all looks good. I'm not too worried about it. Now, we do want to make this area transparent inside, though. So I've got these little steel things holding up the roof. Let's go ahead and just cut those out as well. If I don't like what I've done, for example, right there, I've kind of got this little chunk taken out. I'll just hit X on the keyboard. I'll paint white back on there to bring those things back into opacity. Then I immediately turn push X again to bring back black. It's almost like this game where you're just pushing the X button to paint on opacity. And then if you want to bring back some uh, transparency, just hit that X again. 
It's just a matter of just saying, all right, opacity, transparency, depending on what you've got to do. Now, this guy right here, I don't know, can't really see him. He's got a silhouette here. Not exactly sure how he's seated on here, but I think we're going to get away with it either way. If we just kind of push this down, looks like he's got his foot on maybe a gas pedal or something like that. I don't know. What do you think this guy's name is? Probably, I don't know, Bill? Bill the tractor driver? Yep, so Bill, he's just chilling on here. I'm sure that uh, he's got you know, OSHA regulations. I'm sure he's wearing a seatbelt, right? I'm sure he's, uh, you know, oh, wait, there is no OSHA back then? I'm with you. I get it. Probably doesn't have a seatbelt on. He's probably working super dangerous compared to how we would work today, right? But we're okay with that. Things change. We get more safety going on. There you go. So there we go in real time. I just went through, cut this all out. And I decided I didn't want to cut the video so that you'd know exactly how much time I spent on this. Because I want you to know that we don't want to spend a heck of a whole lot of time on something that's only going to be on screen in a short time. I'm going to go ahead and just color in some of these. I'll hit Command-0. Have a look at that. We've got the tractor all cut out. That looks great. And again, I'm not too worried about this area down here. It's going to be covered by the foreground as we get this thing animated. I want to make sure the exhaust pipe's there because I'm going to be building some smoke to come out of there. And that looks pretty good. So what we want to do now, we've got, I'm going to go ahead and save, Command S or Control S. Now we've got the tractor layer cut out. Now we need this last layer that's going to be on top of everything. That's going to be our foreground layer. So I'll go ahead and move that colored layer up because I want it to be just below my foreground layer. I'll double click on the layer name and I'll select, I'll type foreground. I'll turn that layer back on and I'll immediately add a layer mask to it. We're going to go through the exact same process we did with the tractor, but this time I want to have only just the front part of this ground being opaque. I don't want the background or the tractor being opaque. So I've got the layer mask selected. I double checked. I got a frame around it. Everything looks great. And what I'm going to do now, I've got black as my foreground color. I'll hit B on the keyboard for brush. Make sure that it's on there. I'm going to hit that right square bracket a few times. Get it nice and large brush in here. I'm just going to paint because all this area is not in the foreground. So I'm just quickly roughing this in. Got a nice soft brush. This is one of those times where I actually am going to change the brush. I'm going to add hardness. We'll go 100% on the hardness. I'm just going to get that really close to that area of foreground. Now for me, I'm just kind of gauging, kind of eyeballing where that foreground would be. We have no idea what of that dirt is actually going to be in the foreground. We weren't there. So we're just going to use a little artistic license on that and see what areas are actually in the foreground. I'll hit Z on the keyboard and zoom in. Going to go back to B on the keyboard for my brush. Going to reduce the brush size. Got it about 80 pixels now. That's about right. I'll click this, bring the hardness back to 0%, so we get a nice 100% soft brush. And actually, I'm going to reduce the brush size a little bit. I'm down to 60 pixels now. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to make this line right here perfect. Got the line perfect, and again, just kind of guessing where the foreground would be. I'm actually going to reduce that brush size one more just to... Kind of have the uh, the advantage of reducing the softness on here as well. Just going to go ahead and scroll over. And all I'm doing is just guessing. It's really easy what dirt is going to be in front of the tractor because the tractor is in front of it. But as I get to where now I don't have the tractor to help me, I am just going to kind of build my own little line right through here. No one knows where the actual line of foreground was, and so we can just kind of build our own little line here. Going to add some hills and valleys and use some of the, the dark areas of the dirt to help me. But I'm just going to fill this in along the top area. Get it nice and perfect. And now that I've got a contour ready to go, what I want to do is I want to clean up that soft edge just a little bit. Still just a little bit too soft. Now we could have with a smaller diameter brush, right now I've got it at 50 pixels. We could have probably used a smaller diameter brush on that last step and then we'd know exactly where we were. But this time I'm going to go ahead and just add a little bit of white back to this, some opacity. And we're going to clean up that soft edge because it's not going to work if it's that soft. So I'll go ahead and reduce the size of the brush down to 40 pixels now. And I'm going to hit X on the keyboard. I've got white as my foreground color. What I'm going to do is just remove some of that softness. You can see right as I go along that same edge, 
just getting rid of some of that kind of blue haze that's a result of that soft brush. And again, this is one of those things where how much time do we want to spend on this? We want to spend the right amount of time on this. What's the right amount of time? Just enough so that you can get away with it. Not enough that you are spending a lot of time on it and wasting a lot of money, right? Your time is your money. If you're getting paid piece rate for a video production like this, where you're doing something like this, or you're trying to sell it to others, then you want to spend as much time as necessary, but not so much that you're cheating yourself out of money. I hit Command-0, I'm going to hit Command-S to save as well. Now we've got a perfectly cut out foreground. I'm going to go ahead and just delete this colored layer, layer 1, throw it in the garbage. I've got my tractor layer that's still visible underneath. I'm going to go ahead and turn on the background layer. Now the purpose of this, I'm going to save one more time, the purpose of this is to break this tractor free. So I'm going to go ahead and select the tractor, I'm going to hit the V on the keyboard to bring up my move tool, and I want to show you why we did this. So you can imagine now, in After Effects, us being able to animate this. So I can take this tractor, I can animate it using keyframes, bring it on down into the pit, I can rotate it as well, which is what I would do to make it so it looks like it's actually coming up the other side, and actually make it look like it is down inside the pit, like it's moving dirt and so forth. Maybe I can make it fly too, right? But that foreground allows us to be able to make it so that it actually looks like it's in front of this dirt and that it's actually down inside this pit. The tractor itself is beautifully cut out so we can see the background behind it. And the background also is missing the tractor. We need to have that tractor gone from that background layer. Otherwise, as soon as we moved it, there would still be another copy right here. So there we go. We've got three layers. First one, the top one is a foreground. Second one's the tractor itself by itself. The last one is the background with only the track with with everything except the tractor visible. I'm going to go ahead and leave this background in here and I'll see you on the next video where we're actually going to bring this into After Effects and begin animating it.